Welcome to the Guided Notes video on the reproductive system. Today you'll be completing the Guided Notes titled The Reproductive System. If you do not already have them out, pause this video and do so now. First, let's take a look at the functions of the reproductive system. For this entire video, we'll be dividing everything by sex, as the functions and structures vary by sex. First, the female reproductive system. Its functions are to produce the female sex cell and release it for fertilization and, once an egg is fertilized, to house the zygote and provide nutrients to it through all developmental st stages, zygote to fetus, until the new offspring is viable, that is, can live on its own. The male reproductive system is much simpler in function. The male reproductive system's only function is to produce the male sex cell and release them to fertilize an egg. Now we'll examine the structures of the reproductive system, starting with the male. As we go through the structures of the male reproductive system, follow along with the diagram on your page. Also, you're going to write small. There's a lot of information here. The organs that are producing the sperm are the testes. The scrotum, by hanging away from the torso, allows the testes to be at a lower temperature than body temperature, as sperm are temp temperature sensitive and will not form properly if the testes are kept too warm. The seminal vesicles produce most of the fluid that is semen. Semen is the protective mucous fluid that aids the sperm in leaving the body. The vas deferens are the tubes connecting each testis to the seminal vesicles and then to the urethra and the prostate. The prostate gland produces the final component of semen called prostate fluid and is filled with muscle tissue that contract, forcing semen through the urethra and out the body. You should remember the urethra from the excretory system. In males, the urethra is dual function, both excretory by connecting to the bladder and reproductive by connecting to the prostate. The penis is the structure surrounding the urethra, and when the penis is engorged with blood, becomes rigid. This rigidity makes it easier to insert the penis into the vagina to release the semen for egg fertilization. Now we'll switch over to examine the structures of the female reproductive system. Again, examine your diagram as we go. Also, you're going to need to add a label. The ovaries, the oval-shaped objects on your diagram, produce the eggs. Through the ovulation cycle, they prepare and release one egg every month. Label the ovaries. The fallopian tubes are the egg's pathway from the ovaries to the uterus. Through, though the fallopian tubes are not actually connected to the ovaries, instead, at ovulation, the finger-like structures at the end of the tube sweep over the ovary and help propel the egg into the tube. The uterus is where a fertilized egg will settle, forming a placenta to feed the developing offspring and eventually contract to push the offspring out of the uterus, through the cervix, and down the vagina during delivery. The cervix is the union between uterus and vagina. During a pregnancy, the cervix fills with a mucus plug that seals off the uterus. Finally, the vagina is a tube of tissue connecting the uterus to outside the female's torso. It is in the vagina that seminal fluid is deposited, and then, and from there, the sperm swim their way to the fallopian tubes as they seek an egg to fertilize. Next, I want to show you a short animation that will take you on a quick journey from fertilization through the embryonic stage of development. In this video, then, we'll look at the beginning of development, looking into the ovary at an unfertilized egg. It then gets fertilized by sperm, which travel down the fallopian tube. So here, millions of sperm coming along. Several of them will hit the egg and try to penetrate it, but one will win, as it were, go into the nucleus, 
And then there's a reprogramming process where the male and female nuclei have their genes uh, set aside to be turned on and off for early development. Here you see early cleavage stages occurring. And this is one of the early growth phases. As the embryo moves down the fallopian tube, it's going to form an important stage called the blastocyst here in a few seconds. Of course, in real life, that takes days, about five days. At this stage, then, I'd like to draw your attention to the inside of the blastocyst, where there are cells called the inner cell mass, which I'll be abbreviating as ICM. Those are the cells that make the entire animal. And the outer cells give rise to the placenta and other supporting tissues. At this stage, the embryo implants into the wall of the uterus. This is when a pregnancy is really initiated. And now we'll see those blue inner cell mass cells form a disc. And then as the cells continue to grow, they change their physical positions, their kind of geographical relationship to one another. And you'll see that represented here as this disc gets transformed into an embryo. Those lines represent sites where cells are migrating in and out. And here's an important stage when the three beginning layers of the embryo, the so-called germ layers, are formed. And I'll come back to that in a few minutes. As development proceeds, there's more growth and movement of cells. It'll begin to form a neural tube. Here it turns, and appendages start to bud out. You see the head forming and the eye. And then eventually, we get a small embryo. And some months later, of course, this would be born as a young baby. This concludes our Guided Notes video on the reproductive system and our Guided Notes series on the human body. If you've watched all of them, congratulations, you've made it through. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.